What's up guys? How you guys doing today? Um, sorry I haven't made a video here in about a month or two. I've had a lot going on in the past few months. Um, as you can see by the caption below, um, I did start a hot shot truck biz business and I wanted to go over what it takes to start one. I just want to make a really quick video so I'm just in and out kind of deal. Um, as you can see I made a small list on my iPad and I'm gonna go over from start to finish on what you need to do. So, like I said, this is gonna be short and sweet, and if you guys have any questions at all, drop a comment below, and um, I'll do my best to reach out to you and we'll get it handled, but I just wanted to get you guys trained if you wanted to start something like this, and I'm going to make another video on my opinion of the first two months that I've been inside of the business. So anyway, so I'm gonna get started and get done real quick. So first thing you wanna do is get insurance quotes. Um, my insurance is progress through Progressive and um, it does cost a pretty penny. Depending on your age, it will cost you a bunch of money. But definitely get insurance quotes because mine is over 1600 a month. And a million, $1 million policy and 100000 and cargo insurance. <clears throat> Next thing you need to do is think of your name and research it. Uh, when you go to file for your LLC, um, you need to research your name before because right now in the state of Florida, they are about three weeks behind. And definitely research your name because if you don't, you will wait another week after if they reject your name. So after you do that and research your name, uh, build your LLC. Um, I, for my LLC, I use the Swift Filings, and I believe it cost me right around 300 bucks or 400 bucks, something like that, but it included everything uh, to get done. It made it a lot easier. Uh, next thing you need to do is buy a truck and trailer. Um, as you guys know, I had a truck already, but um, it's a 2019 Silverado 2500 Duramax diesel L L5P, four-wheel drive. Do get a four-wheel drive. Do not get a two-wheel drive. I promise you, you will regret it really quickly. And a 34-foot down-to-earth uh, two-car bumper pull hauler with a winch. It's gotta have a winch. I'll explain that later. But um, guys, if you want insight on what truck to, what truck to buy, um, I would not recommend buying a Cummins. Uh, either Ford or GM and I will tell you this my Duramax pulls like a freaking monster and I'll probably never own another truck and it's just it amazes me how good that L5P pulls and I haven't had one issue with it so far knock on wood even though that's my Corvette knock on wood <coughs> next after you buy your truck and trailer uh, create your LLC get all, get all that done and get your EIN, which is your entity and tax info done, which Swift Filings does that for you. But if you want to do it yourself, you can. It's just you're going to pay the same amount of money, so you might as well just pay the company to do it. And um, after you do that, after you get your EIN, set up your business bank account, which is very easy. Go to your local bank or the bank you use and set up your business account. It takes about probably 30 minutes. Um, once you get your business bank account done and the name on it, and you figure out your name and your EIN's done, buy checks and get a debit card for your business once you do that supply your account with about 1500 bucks to start um, that's about a good number to start with in your business bank account as i've learned so once you get 1500 bucks put in that account from your personal account uh, get set up with quickbooks quickbooks self-employed tracks your mileage uh, which is very very helpful you turn on that thing swipe right for personal and swipe left for business and um then you and it has you can put the uh what you what am i trying to say can't move my lips uh you can put in this in the field when you swipe business on where you went so you know exactly if you went 100 miles you know exactly where you went and what kind of cars you put or what kind of cars you pulled <clears throat> After you get set up with QuickBooks, get your bank account set up with QuickBooks and your credit cards, whatever you're gonna use, I would just recommend using your business account. Get a business credit card if you can. Uh, you have to have, they usually like to have a 700 to 750 credit score to apply for a business card 
which I did. So I applied for one and got one. So I have two bank, uh, bank accounts logged into QuickBooks. After that, find a good local accountant. If you already have an accountant, you're at a plus. Just go to them and tell them you're gonna start a business and they will take care of you. And there are total, this wasn't part of my plan to say, but there's a total of, I think, 343 options to uh, write off on this in this industry. After you do that, get your DOT and MC number. Uh, the DOT and MC number you can get pretty much anywhere you can do it through DOT or you can go online Just search how to get it and there's plenty of people that know how to do it. It costs about I think it was 250 bucks to get both of them <clears throat> After you get your DOT and MC number get your name and number on a magnet uh, Let me show you mine. So these are my magnets right here and as you guys can see I don't have an MC number or a motor carrier number because I'm an in-state hot shotter only so but these letters here have to be two inches tall at a minimum uh dot requires 50 foot they have to be able to see the number 50 foot away and i would recommend getting a magnet if you're like me and use your personal truck and do other things with the truck you know outside the business um let me see what else is there oh yep get business cards made that is a must uh get business cards made so whenever you drop cars off to the person that are paying you to haul them um they can use you again without logging on to central dispatch and having the competition because if they like what you did for them in my case i give a business card out every single time i deliver and it has worked for me almost every time they call back and have me do other things so and I have been in business for two months now and after that drive around so this is initial drive around and offer your services and meet and greet with business owners aka used car lots um, auctions go to auctions and submit your transporter ID and um, like IAA they have transporter IDs but uh yep drive around meet and greet and have a happy to happy go get attitude because people love that and they will most likely use you i've already i've got a bunch of local people that are using me right now so and then let me see after that get your insurance and registration ducks in a row uh your insurance you need to have uh before you even hook your trailer up to your truck and like i said one million dollar policy a hundred thousand and uh oh actually i did not explain um Guys, I don't have an MC number because, oh wait, yeah, I think I did say that. I don't have an MC number because I'm an in-state tower only. You don't have to have an MC if you're in-state. You have to have an MC if you go out of state. Um, on the flip side of that, I do have a $1 million policy, even though on Central Dispatch, you only have to have a $300,000 and $50,000 cargo load insurance policy if you're just going in-state. I have it because it's just people like it a lot better and people use you a lot more. Um, and if I wanted to, I can go out of state. But um, anyways, <clears throat> what's next? Oh yeah, well, I, this isn't on my list, but keep your insurance and registration in one envelope. So just in case you do get pulled over by a DOT, which knock on wood, I haven't gotten pulled over yet because um, I do do everything correctly. I'm very legal and what's next figure out how much you need to charge to transport vehicles this is the big one right here if you don't know what you're gonna charge and this is hard uh, this is the hardest thing about the whole business this, this is even harder than having the 1600 a month come out of your bank account for insurance so um, guys this was hard for me in the beginning because I had no clue I used to be in this industry but worked for somebody and I had no yeah this was just hard for me anyway so I usually charge about a dollar fifty to two dollars a mile depending on what I do um, you'll learn very quickly on what you have to charge to make ends meet um, anything below I would say a dollar twenty five a mile long distance you're too cheap um, unless you have a three or four car carrier but in this case guys with the two car carrier guys like us um, the hot shotters that don't have to have a CDL because you're under 26.1, which I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, you you need to charge you you have to charge a little bit more. 
but let me get into this. So if you have a load, let's just say, because I go to Jacksonville almost every day. So if I go to Jacksonville and on the way back, so Jacksonville, I'll usually charge about 75 cents to a dollar a mile going up there. I know you're like, what? And I was like, what? Like, I have to charge that? And well, guys, what you don't understand is when you use Central Dispatch, you find a load there, and before you go there, you find a load back. So usually I'll get a dollar a mile to go there, and then I'll get a dollar a mile to go back. So I'm really making $2 a mile, which is extremely good. So just go Jacksonville and back every day, I'll make about 400 bucks. And I'm home usually every day by lunchtime to two o'clock if I start early in the morning, like seven, eight o'clock, or six or seven o'clock. So um, guys, if you have questions about that, please contact me or leave a comment below and I will get with you because it is hard. Um, what's my next here? <clears throat> I did put you will lose money at first because you will. Uh, I'll get in, I'll get into that on the next video. Um, okay, here we go. Find a good dispatch service to use. Um, I use Central Dispatch, as I've said. So I'm gonna get into the pros and cons of Central Dispatch. So Central Dispatch, on there, as I've noticed at first, because I got screwed a few times so far. Um, so the first time I got screwed, I was taking a load to Ocala. Well, I found a load there, but I did not call ahead of time when I got when I got to Ocala what am I trying to say when I got to Ocala with the load um, I dropped it off and I knew there was loads around that I can take back well guys there are brokers on there that require you to sign up with them before you get a load well I got screwed because I called three people that day I remember it like it was yesterday I called three people that day and they all said I had to sign up and the sign up time takes a week or two or blah, 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 you know, so, and I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here pissed off and I'm like, you know, why, why the F are you on here? If you're not going to give me a load, it makes no sense. And they, and they all say the same thing. It's a free market. Well, and I called central dispatch. They said the same thing. They don't care. So guys, you will learn very quickly on who and who you cannot use because I do not sign up for any of these people. They piss me off. So I use mostly private people. Um, but on the flip side of that, uh, Central Dispatch has made me money, pretty good money on top, on top of what I do here locally. Uh, on Central Dispatch, it took exactly six business days to get me signed up for Central Dispatch. So definitely do that ahead of time because you will be waiting. Um, so after you get yourself going and you know, you do your first couple toes, you need to realize you need to keep all fuel and expense receipts, even though QuickBooks, once you get signed up, they do most of that for you. It's the same thing, you swipe right for personal, swipe left for business, and it keeps track of it automatically. But keep your receipts, and in this case, I went and bought a filing cabinet, and I do it by week by week basis, so whatever I spend in fuel that week, all those receipts go in one file for that week for the year. So I know, and receipts, and I make copy of checks, so I know exactly what I spent and how much I made, on top of how much, because my, on top of how much my insurance cost me every day, which is about 80 bucks. Um, okay, as it says, explain MC and DOT number in the 26-1 law. So I'm gonna go through this, and this is extremely important. So your initial thing you're gonna do is get your DOT number, like you see here. Your DOT number. That's if you're going to stay in state. Well, your MC number is your motor carrier number. Um, you don't you don't need an MC number if you just plan on staying in, staying in state, but you do need it if you're going out of state. So since I stay in state, I don't need one, and I would recommend getting the MC. I've actually filed for the MC already, but um, and then the 26 one law. So guys, for a hotshot trucking business, you have to be below a 26,001 pound uh, GVWR, which my truck is 10,000, my trailer is 14,000. So I'm at 24,000 pounds total gross vehicle weight rating. Um, that is extremely important, and you need to know that. That is, uh, man, DOT will kill you. Um, then, Oh, when a DOT car passes you, they look for this. Eight suspension point straps, strapped, I'm sorry. 
when you do this you better have four straps on that vehicle on each vehicle uh, one on each suspension uh, suspension point uh, right front left front right rear left rear you better have a strap on each one of them in my case uh, four straps go on the front, four straps go on the back and on each car and a, my winch cable is always on the back car some, somewhere, somehow I always put it on there just for safety because if for some reason, which will never happen hopefully, if all eight straps break, I want those vehicles to come at me and kill me and not go back and kill somebody else because it's free if it kills me, it's not free if, you get, if they kill somebody else. I'd rather destroy my life than hurt somebody else's, so I make sure to be as safe as possible. Uh, buy new straps, guys. For some odd reason on offer up and stuff like that, people sell used straps. Please do not buy used straps. Um, get new straps. They're very cheap to buy 10 there and i'll be honest i went to harbor freight and bought them and they were great each one of them were like 9.99 go buy new straps guys it is very cheap i bought 10 and it was like it was cheap um winch winch is a definite must in this industry if you do not have a winch you will lose money um on central dispatch they do have in-op vehicles um, that require winches to just winch up most of them are not wrecked It's just maybe they don't have keys or the battery's dead or transmissions bad or the engines bad or tires flat or something something stupid that makes it an up so Guys when you have an in-op vehicle a winch is a must get your winch on your trailer Don't leave your house and start this business without a winch You will and, and when in-op vehicles are on there most time you will make more money on in-op vehicles um and guys last but not least every single time you go out of here every error i'm sorry i'm sorry every single time you leave somewhere with somebody else's cars do not be afraid to walk around that trailer two or three times make sure your straps are tight make sure you cannot move your straps um make sure your straps are tight make sure your t tires are aired up and not flat Make sure your ramps are in and secured. Make sure your tailgate's up. Make sure everything inside your, inside your bed of your truck is good and secure. Um, check your safety chains on your trailer. Check your pin to, your, to the ball. Check your hitch. I mean, check everything. Do not be afraid to walk around that trailer.